Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Mary, and I'm joined with Bonnie and Leah and Katie, talking about our one cool author... Uh, Bonnie talked about Koki Roberts, and Leah talked about Deborah Kelly. So before we dive back in, we want to know something random about our gal pals. Yes. And I'm thinking, what book do you commonly recommend to people to read? Dun, dun, dun. I have a variety of them. <laughs> <laughs> While I choose one, Bonnie's got big eyes. What yeah, is you Bonnie? just stared at me from across the room. <laughs> No pressure. Yeah. Are no you pressure. going through multiple ones no. in your head, too? <laughs> no, I just kind of have a default one. Um, in middle school, it's way too young to be reading that book. But uh, The Joy of Sex. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's that lady? Dr. F- <laughs> Dr. Ruth. Oh, Dr. Ruth. Oh, yes. yeah, Dr. Ruth was awesome. No, she was no. amazing. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> no. Um, uh, Julian May has a series of science fiction books. And I always recommend that people start with the uh, intervention. Mm, it's gotcha. It's funny because it was written in like I want to say like the '60s to the '80s. So like when you're reading it now, it's it's like happening now. Gotcha. So it's it's funny some of the things that she gets right. That she uh, talks about. They have these things called plaques. Okay. They're pretty much like tablets oh. or smartphones or something, but they're like rechargeable and like kind of disposable. Mm-hmm kind of things uh she thought that we'd have like flying egg cards where are they but it it pretty much just (laughs) follows like a family that's kind of like the kennedys or something oh okay like that but they're like um the kennedys of like mind powers Ooh. so this is this whole thing and that there's um there's like five books in that series and then there's like a four book like prequel thing where they go back through like a time gate like a one way a star thing. donut oh star donut, <laughs> star donut. yes it's, star- it's stargate, stargate. But I, I just always call it a star donut yes. because it's it's a donut <laughs> <laughs> i just finished atlantis <laughs> um but no it's just like a one way time gate oh. thing where you go back so it's like all kinds of like they deal with all kinds of issues and the characters are really great. How did you Ooh. stumble across that as a middle I, school? I was uh, in a people to people student ambassador program oh. and I picked up the book in Australia because I had a cool cover. <laughs> it was in the science you. fiction section. It has a cool <laughs> cover. I remember reading a little bit on the plane before I fell asleep about um, the main character um, and his cat. Ooh. And then I picked it up a few months later i kept like rereading them ah. i haven't reread them since like college and i'm i'm bound to to read it again yeah, that, that's that's on my my next lockdown list oh list there you go re-read. the next one i, I think know there's a lot of people that probably have a to be read pile yes for like future lockdowns now yeah i know i do mm-hmm. yeah I have a whole list exactly of my, <laughs> my quarantine to do list <laughs> going i like it gonna be prepared this next time yeah right <laughs> i'm always prepared <laughs> Which kind of kind of took the fun out of it to a certain degree. <laughs> True. Katie, do you have a favorite book that you always recommend? Or not favorite book, but a yeah. book that you definitely recommend to people? I have lots and it kinda of depends on the person. It so does. Kind of like where I'm at have too. a conversation and you're yeah. like, Oh, well, you know The one that comes this up yeah. could be like in your wheelhouse, yeah. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um but I would say kind of across the board and um as we transition short story club yes. to novel Ooh, club reading, club, reading a real book a real book club oh let's i mean do even it. those short stories were super cool they were cool but um the first book i'm going to have them read is untamed by glennon doyle which i'm excited mm-hmm. to read actually yeah i read it um at during the first mm-hmm. lockdown right i like it, how we're already referring the, the first one <laughs> Not the upcoming one. Lockdown one, lockdown two. I'm going to have to reread it during Electric the Boogaloo. <laughs> lockdown. The lockdown to end all lockdowns. Um, but I, I think just it really hit home for me because a lot of the things I feel like I struggle with, which are having courage to be true to myself and not See? that people please their personality mm-hmm. and, and things like that, that book like really had a lot of inspiration and guidance for me. Yeah. So. Plus, you're a goddamn cheetah, Katie. <laughs> That's right. It's in the book. Yes. 
I have it embroidered beautifully That's to right. remind me. <laughs> the, uh, Leah. Two people have listened to the podcast of where you talked about the book, where you talked about Glennon, yeah. and came in and read the book what? and said, I have already recommended it to other people. Nice. Uh, so it has always, every time it has come back, people are like, oh, I don't know if I'll like it or not. And then they're like, I loved it. So, yeah, it's been okay. winning people over here at the library <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit. Um, oh, gosh. OK, the one I've been trying to think. There's lots of different ones. To writers, I always recommend Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. It's one of my favorite writing books. Uh, her main advice that I took to heart was called Throwing Up on the Page. It was the <laughs> idea of just getting it out. Have it be yep. ugly. Have it be messy. Just get words on a page and organize it all later. Just get the emotion. Get the rot. All of it. So I always, And the book is, has a lot more great advice. But that's always the one that I'm like, you know, that was the key for me. Um, but Power of Myth is actually probably the one that I reference like way too often. I'm a big Joseph Campbell fan. Um, I like the writing structure that was in it. Joseph Campbell is the reason why I changed my name to Kate Chaplin for a while because it was in the Power of Myth. I find a way to always geekedly be, well, you know, in Power of Myth. <laughs> 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 and then people would be like, you mean that TV series that was on PBS? Yes, there was a book <laughs> that had a lot more cool stuff in it. So, yeah, I mean, I want mine to be a really cool author gal. So that's why I was like, hey, bird by bird. But really, it's I tell everybody about Power of Myth. <laughs> <laughs> what is yours, Mary? Well, believe it or not, it is a Jane Austen book, but it's not <gasps> the Jane Austen book that you might think of. Ooh. Everyone, when they hear Jane Austen, the first thing they think of is Pride and Prejudice. Right. It is the most popular it one. It is the most popular one. Um, it's It was actually her second published book. Ah. Uh, it wasn't her first. Sense and Sensibility was the first. Oh, that was the first one? Yes. Ah. But the one that, that I always recommend to people was the last complete one she wrote, but it wasn't published until after she died, Was is Persuasion. Oh, yeah. And I always tell people, don't read Persuasion until you're at least 30 years old. Ah, uh, there you because go. Because it's about a second chance of love and life. <laughs> and until you hit about 30, you right. really can't appreciate it. Yeah, this I mean, is true. you know, when you read it and you go, yeah. And, oh, yeah, when, you know, you, you said no to the guy and, you know, he comes back around 10 years later. <laughs> and everybody's circumstances have changed and... You know, so yeah, and and it's her. It's a small novel. I mean, gotcha. it's not. It's not as large as like Pride and Prejudice or Pride and Prejudice or Mansfield Park, which I hate. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> tell me how you really feel. Yeah, and Emma. <laughs> um, I and I relate well to Emma, but um, but the Pride, you know, but Persuasion is just one that kind of resonates, and nice. it's, it was and. One of them that they did in, in 95, um, movie-wise, yeah. is actually very true to the book. Oh. Um, so, you you know, and it's great characters and and it was, you know, mature. And, and I think as she wrote it, she knew that she wasn't well oh, and gotcha. was on the decline. And, and this was probably going to be her last one? Well, she actually wrote another one after it, Sanditon, which PBS oh, made yeah. that sad-ass attempt at trying to make it a series. I remember you um, being mad at it. Yeah, and... <laughs> But it was only about 12 chapters, you know, and she just got too sick and she just, and she never oh. had a chance to go back and do any kind of revision or anything. Mm. So, you know, you were just kind of getting into the characters and, of you know, kind of the background of the characters and the location when she stopped writing it. So uh. when they kind of made it a series, they kind of had to like, you only Fill had, it? yeah, so you only had a lot. And the fact that it kind of leaves you hanging and everybody's all in uproar, I was like, well, the book kind of left you hanging. <laughs> right, There's exactly. There's been a few people who have like gone on and finished it you know there's right. been two or three variations of it out there because she's in the public domain so yeah. people can do anything with her exactly and they do yeah of course you know <laughs> her, her books you know can be done with and her her person has you know she's a vampire mm -hmm. you know she's her characters you know do mysteries and solve mysteries right with other you joins know. the scooby-doo gang yeah, Wait, no. exactly <laughs> you know you know you, you know what were you damn kids um you know um yeah so you can do anything with her i mean mm -hmm. you know they make alcohol with her name on it yes. soap with her name on it <laughs> teas with her name on it um you know so you can pretty much do whatever you want yeah so uh but persuasion is the one that i kind of have people you know especially they they're like they think it's oh it's like, no this is smaller you'll appreciate it and like I gotcha. said but you got to be over thirty right because if you're reading it at nineteen you're like 
that's nice. <laughs> I'm bulletproof. The world yeah. is my oyster right yeah, now. So, I'll be the yeah. love of my life tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So but I the best best quote went years ago was uh, the gal who had the regional coordinator position before me. Mm-hmm. We were getting ready for a meeting. She was at Williams Sonoma and she was buying a jar of like you know lemon curd or something because we always have we always kind of replied ourselves we're a you know drinking club with a book problem yes and uh, there's always there's always alcohol. i might want to steal that at one point yeah there's always alcohol <laughs> at you know at our at our events um but the gal was when she explained to her you know we always what she said she's oh you know i've never read any books but i just love all her movies so <laughs> oh, she's no. in the jane austen society and she's never read no no this is what she said to oh the, okay yeah, all right okay. she said to the store clerk Whew. yeah the store clerk comes back <laughs> oh i love her you know i've never Never read any of your books, but I love all our movies. Um, which is yeah. at least she's a great but, director. But you know what? Yeah. That's that's where I started. You know, yeah. yeah, you know, pretty much, and watching. You know, so then you read the books. Oh, I get it. You know, and there's more to this. Wait a second. Well, it just her character development was is always so great because, like in Emma, you know, the the chatty lady Miss Bates. Mm-hmm. You, I've been to like conferences, and I'm like, oh my god, and Miss Bates just sat next to me. Or, Same. or you know or, or characters like because it's just so universal you know it may have been written 200 plus years ago but you people all, are people people are people and there's only so many you know traits of people and yeah you know. but i have to tell you a funny story though about yes about about jane yes and 2017 was the 200th anniversary of when she died gotcha and wow, so i that long yeah and so i managed to uh i come up with an idea what can we do in indiana to to you know, commemorate this because there was, you know, big stuff going to be happening. Mm -hmm. And it was also like for like, from like 2013 on was like the 200th anniversary of this one coming out and this book coming out. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's when she passed. And so I, I partnered with the, the RJ Austin society here in Indiana partnered with the Indiana library association. Yeah. And I got like 90% of all public libraries in the state of Indiana to do something Jane. Yeah. Just do something Jane. Yeah. 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 Wow. Tea party, do an exhibit. I mean, some yeah. of them really, really insane. But earlier in that year, in January of that year, the end of that year, I went downtown for for have lunch with a colleague that works with in the state house, and it was just blazing cold that day. Mm-hmm. And um, for those who don't know, there's like only one place to eat downtown across the street from the state, ha- or, uh, the Capitol building mm-hmm. is Lock Miller's. Yeah, little bar. Yeah, it's and a so cute that's place. Yeah, yeah, which is where we we ate. So me and my buddy are, are having lunch and you know talking about work stuff, and um, in walks the new governor Eric Holcomb. Ah, this is the first time he has been in there since he became governor. Ah, I had met him. A month earlier at a luncheon mm-hmm. and um for those who don't know he's very tall i am not <laughs> so he walks in and the bar is it's packed yeah and he's you know pretty him and his security guy and an aide yeah and it's packed so they go sit at the bar there's not even any tables and nobody's paying any attention you know everybody's just eating you know stuff well the bar kind of clears out. It's about one thirty, mm-hmm. and he comes over, and the guys at Lock Miller's want to take a picture of him next to the Lincoln picture that's in there because mm. it's the first time he's eaten there since he's been governor, and he's still all giddy and everything. And I came <laughs> he's up, still to all him, shiny and, and new. you know, and I you know reintroduced myself, and he remembers where he'd met me the month before, and I gave him my Jane Austen business card because I had Jane Austen business card. Yes, and I said, <laughs> Governor, this is the two hundredth anniversary of Jane Austen's passing this year. And he went, I love Jane Austen. Oh. And I said, and, he, and I said, well, we need to do something to commemorate that. And he says, well, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know yet, but I'll let you know. And he <laughs> says, okay. You know, and so we ended up um, on the anniversary of her, of her death. It was Jane Austen Day in Indiana. Oh, nice. So I got a governor nice. proclamation of it. And, you know, Sweet. she's on money. Yeah. Um, she's on coins and she's on the 10 pound note. And um, I actually took some to his office so he could have them. Oh. But, you know. Politics aside, you know, he's a big reader and he's a big history buff. Oh, nice. So when you get, you know, a guy said, I, I love her stuff. And, and you know, he just rattled off some stuff like, okay, you know this stuff. So <laughs> he legit you, knows. You, yeah. You, yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're legit. Oh. So, you know, when you, when you start telling people about this, it's, it's pretty universal. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, case in point, like a friend of mine, I was at a dinner the other night and they gave me the most recent copy of the New Yorker. Oh. And it's like, oh, look, there's a whole article about. About Jane Austen, for, hey. you know, for love or money, and Look you know, so that. it's like everywhere you go. I mean, there's I can't go 
yeah. a week without something. I'm reading mm. People Magazine, Jane Austen. I'm reading Wall Street Journal, Jane Austen. So something it may be Jane Austen. 200 plus years, but it's still every day. It's, yeah. it's every day. And of course, there's like two different types of of jane austen readers there's the you know the academic of course uh, and then there's some that they call the you know they they call them recreational readings the academics refer to them a lot of times as the bonnet enthusiasts the bonnet enthusiasts and i click recreational user because uh that has a lot of different connotations to it Uh, but i love the fact that they you know they kind of it's it's like guys she she wrote these because it gave her something to do, and and she was able to like make a living. Li- well, make not much of a living. Yeah, she really didn't get published until you know get money until the last ten years of her life because she had no money. She oh, was you know gotcha. Yeah, spinster had no you know family resources. She only made like six hundred and forty pounds in her in her lifetime. Now, yeah, I did the math, and it's like seventy one thousand dollars today, but that would have been spread over basically over 10 years or so well, basically over yeah. about 20 plus years uh, you know she died at 41 so you know you know the first 20 years she still had a parent that you know her dad yeah. was still alive and there were still resources but when she hit about you know her mid-20s you know her dad passed away and it yeah. was just her and her mom and her sister because the brothers kind of ended up finding a place for them and you know kind of taking care of them because that's kind of how that worked right but uh but you know she wrote but it's the fact that they, they put so much in there but she did kind of develop the modern novel, but I find it interesting that she, I think she would find it hilarious to know that people take the structure and what she did so seriously, when right. she's just basically writing about stuff she kind of like <laughs> Deborah, you know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. what yeah, about? Well, well, you know, it's like, oh, you know these people, we'll kind of make this stuff in, because, you know, yeah. she didn't talk about, like, the Napoleonic Wars, which is happening all during, because yeah. she was writing for people at that time they all knew about that you didn't have to have a book mm-hmm. that told you but the right. story didn't have to allude to it because you were kind of living it you know you didn't mm-hmm. have to tell people about it you told them the story that's happening you don't have to tell them the you know the the bigger picture it was basically you know the people in a small village and yeah a few families and all the gossip and <laughs> and, and intrigue and exactly. misunderstanding and scandal. and scandal and you know characters like i said you know everyone knows in this space or we know you know, a mom that overreacts to everything. Of and, course. Um, <laughs> or <know>. Mr. Darcy. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Darcy. You know, the, the, the brooding type, you know. and um, <laughs> But, you know, her her books are fun, except for Mansfield Park. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just, Fanny Price, you know, what a milk toast. Uh, it's like, really? You know, it's like, and, but that one is considered her, her, um, her um, slavery novel. Oh, okay. Because the, of the time period, and well, because the 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 father main man character of their you know had uh, money was derived from slavery, and they were you know that was a bad thing. Gotcha. Um, you know, so the morals about it, and right, um, you know, many consider Emma her mystery novel because you know it's a mystery as to oh. you know who wants who, and of course you have the. I always think it as a rom com. <laughs> well, it can be, but there's a lot of mystery to it because you don't know about that's true. Frank and Jane, you know yeah. that relationship, and and all the others. But you know, then you have obviously Pride and Prejudice is the exactly the one. where zombies show up. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. That was. That, I thought it was, was fun. The movie was fun. I I got three <laughs> chapters into the book. I'm like, I can't do this. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And I read a lot of pastiche and a lot of sequels and the fan fiction and mm-hmm. you know people that you know the extended universe. You know, fifty plus years after Pride and Prejudice and right, lots of characters and stuff. But oh my gosh, but you were just like, no. Yeah, and then there's <laughs> Sense and Sensibility <laughs> and Sea Monsters. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like, wow, uh, that one's um, also called uh, a cash grab. <laughs> yeah, oh no, here's the ultimate cash grab. Yeah, Martha. Stewart oh no doing a pride and prejudice themed like cookbook, cookbook? oh and that no. and i'm like okay felon is she yeah. like making gelatin from cow knuckles I and scratch I refuse, or something like... i refuse to buy the book i'm sorry felon um right. as i like to refer to her as um you know you you know you're obviously you can't ran out of ideas and like hey i can do this one because again she's in the public mm-hmm. domain so i can do whatever i want with her and still make a quick buck so exactly like, i heard this jane austen's popular again yeah exactly. <laughs> Let me just and make of course, a cookbook when did it quick. come out about the time of the 200th anniversary of course you couldn't do anything without spitting and talking about this and <laughs> when a memo that. circulated around yeah oh i can make money on this one you know i'll put my name on there and it's like and then of course you go ooh and ah. um but it's interesting though for you know something that's you know considering 200 you know the regency period in modern times 
man, the social media of, mm-hmm. of Jane is like everywhere. And I would think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it used to be well, you have to, you know, have to be on the Jane Austen Society. Oh hell mm-hmm. no, the Jane Austen fan club online is <laughs> right. like thirty thousand people strong all over the country or all over the world. Anybody with a hashtag? Bang. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're all <laughs> jumping on the bandwagon, and I. I relish in the fact that i get excited when somebody says oh i read this or i'm reading this and i'm thinking oh that's i'm happy for them. <laughs> right exactly I'm happy yes. that they're reading you know they're reading the stuff for the first time because yeah. you, there's always that time where you can only read something for the first mm-hmm. time once yes and that yeah. that thrill of being able to read when when, when i started doing when i started mm-hmm. doing the sherlock holmes thing and i got in, kind of tied in with that yeah and i was reading what they called the canon for the first time yes mm-hmm. and i remember having i was at a sherlock's Holmes convention you know they have little cons just like you know and they have little cons and everything and I was having a breakfast with you know an eminent Sherlockian and he was telling me um that he envied me because I'm reading it for the first time uh and yes says, and he says I you know you're, I'm, I'm so envious because you and you do and you read it and you're oh you know oh and, right you know, it's that, a that surprise time, you know and, and it's fun to reread it like an old friend you're going back to visit an old friend yes. and you read a book that you like and you read it over and over again um like for instance one of mine is um bimbos of the death sun <laughs> nice read that one no but i like the title oh <laughs> it's basically it's it's a it's written in the mid 80s it's a it's a take of a murder at a sci-fi convention oh Ooh. look at that and every time i read it is like i would find something new and it's like See? some new yeah. reference to it and it was like and then it was a <laughs> night, Easter egg. night of the living trekkies that's another one that's oh like, yeah that one there you, you go know, yeah. you read it you <laughs> burst out laughing you know um so you know yes my geek cred is 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 solid exactly and the force but, is strong with her yes and uh <laughs> yes hey i saw a new hope the weekend that it opened people hey so did i yep yeah I was three months old. Katie, how about you? <laughs> I was 14. I was 14, and my dad took me because he had seen it like the day before. And he's like, okay, we're going to go see this. And I saw it like 20 times that summer. Um, Katie's going to kill us with her phasers. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm I grew up. But I'm I grew up. I love you, Jane. I love you. And I love the ones that get Jane Austen and Jane Eyre confused. I'm Always. Like, no, 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 no. I I will say when we were starting to build the collection in the library, I will be like, wait a minute, is that a Jane Eyre or is that a Jane Austen? I'm like, no, no, no. One's a book and one's an author. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one's so, one book. And then yes. there was a lot of books. Exactly. So I speaking. was trying to like separate it in my head from like the get go when we started getting fiction <laughs> in to be like, I cannot be that person who messes up the Jane Eyre and the Jane Austen. Yeah, you don't want to. Because I look at him like, really? No, no, just just no. Exactly. But, uh, but you know, I, I just like the fact that the one thing about it is people that read are so much more interesting than people who don't. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And it doesn't matter what they read. Yes. They are mm-hmm. so much interesting. Like, for instance, right now I'm reading um, uh, The Daughters of Yolta. Ah. And it's a, it's a historical um, about the Yolta conference gotcha. in World War II and it's Churchill's daughter Ooh. and Roosevelt's daughter and Herman's daughter, who was the U S ambassador to Russia. Okay. Gotcha. And th- they were the only three women that were at the Yolta conference. Hmm. Oh, wow. And, you know, the whole backstory and the whole stuff, you know, it's history and it's women based. And it's- that's fascinating. Like from that time period, yeah. especially that event told hmm. through their perspective. Right. And what oh, was all the whole backstory and how basically they were there to, support their fathers and probably entertain each other to well, a certain extent to certain degree and, and kind of you diplomacy know, and, uh, yes and you know the the story of like some of them were very much involved anna roosevelt she, yeah it's all she could do it's like the first time she actually got to do something to prove herself you know to her father right of course he was dead six weeks after that you know, oh. he was, and that reason that she went is like how badly his health was and right and oh also, yeah and by the way russians are bad um yeah <laughs> still that was no way really i know right since when yeah so you know stalin not they just say stalin's daughter was not there because he did bad things with her. no i know so well, she figure. was probably in a gulag somewhere well, basically a <laughs> didn't gulag. even like his own family yeah he wasn't really he was not a good dad um surprise surprise, surprise. But it's just interesting when you can read, you know, the, the, the female perspective on history. Yeah. And uh, so, but I always tell people, if you read, 
you're you're way more interesting than than mm-hmm. those that don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we just got done uh, reading and listening to Frankenstein. Uh, mm-hmm. Amber Jones did the audio book for us, and so uh, that was mind blowing. Listening to Amber and also you know reading it at the same time too. Of this is completely different than what I thought it was than what mm-hmm. pop culture was. So there are things that's like you know what we got to read it because what you hear about it is totally different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and interestingly enough. Um, is it Wollencraft? Wollencraft, yes. Who's yeah. Shelley's mom? Yeah. Um, total she, feminist. Jane, yeah, yeah. And Jane, like that was like they refer to her as like that. Yeah. She was like, um, Jane's intellectual parent. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because she, she, I mean, she used a lot of her ideas and stuff incorporated in her. Right. Story. So, so you know, all those early women writers, you know, Bernie, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Francis Bernie, you know, the whole how they just all like, they really vibed off of each they other did. And, and they're like and, and, i'll bring and, you one better and, and you yeah know, build a lot on of it. them never met per se you but know? they read each other but they read each other and that's mm-hmm. that's how they kind of they realized now jane and like the others um she like no one knew that other than her family uh for the most part you know she, her books were published by a lady i mean you know that uh-huh. you, just, you know you're, you're not supposed to promote yourself right. you're not supposed to do all that stuff so that kind of changed not too long after she died. Gotcha. But there were some that were like Frances Bernie. She was like, you know, everybody knew her and she yeah. wrote. And obviously Shelley, when she started writing later on and, you know, the Hers was and all anonymous these. at first. Yeah, but they eventually, yeah. you know, they realized, hey, you know. and We should put a name on it. <laughs> um, and we can think, actually, you know, the people that actually publish this stuff like John Murray. I mean, yeah. the whole that whole publishing empire, if they hadn't done that, but a lot of people that we like now, I mean, and of course, Murray's still an, an imprint. I mean... Oh, is it really? Yeah, John Murray, there's oh, still, there's still stuff. Keep... I think it's been swallowed up by swallowed oh, up. Oh, yeah, swallowed probably. Up. but the name still remains. But, but yeah, but, and you, know, you know, and, and that was, you know, if they didn't publish these people, we would never... And if yeah. it wasn't for circulating libraries... Right, exactly. To get the word out yep. for, you know, and they were always like three novels, you know, three-part novels, and you go to the circulating library, and you pay yep. your subscription, and You'd be able to read your books, and that's what Frankenstein novels was. were bad. You know, novels were oh, they were morally men, women, young women should they were they need to read books of sermons. And sure, stuff like they shouldn't yeah, have right. thoughts and feelings and emotions. What? Yeah. Oh, you read novels? <laughs> you know. Oh no! Oh no! No, I read philosophy. Burn her. She's a witch. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the instantaneous. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> Any more uh, Jane tidbits you have? For well, us? my favorite, one of her yes. favorite quotes, because most of her stuff, her letters and stuff were burned. Oh, did not gotcha. Want, they did not want. Oh, by her she, sister. Yeah, okay. she was pretty snarky. Mm. Ah. So to keep the, the you know, the, the quaint Aunt Jane persona that of the course. family tried to get in there. But some things slip by. And one of my favorite quotes is, um, is her, you know, visiting a friend and she's writing to Cassandra, her sister. I shall sit by the fire, drink French wine, and forget about vulgar economy. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> and she has some other, you know, some other doozies that she'd you know fling out that managed to find her way but she nice she, but she was very religious too i actually brought she actually brought wrote some prayers did she really yeah, oh, Jane look at that. i mean she was very you know her dad was a was a was a rector and so she grew up in gotcha. the, the atmosphere of the church what well, was her could, religion was she church of england church of england okay yeah. gotcha there you go and you know so you know she could be pretty snarky but you know she still had a, a faith to her which right you exactly know, which, you know was refreshing but but she still had you know she could be a little a little, you know. There you go. Poison pen at little times. saucy. Yeah, and, I do and like a little saucy. Those, gal. There's only like like 160 <laughs> of her letters that survived, and she wrote back and forth to her sister when they weren't together, like every day. Oh so, yeah, oh yeah. So the, you know the the you know comments of the day and visiting one brother and taking care of kids and then visiting somewhere <laughs> else and coming over there and so. Oh nice. So. That's fascinating. <laughs> I love it. And I love that there's a whole society to to cheerlead, to celebrate, and to keep her memory going. Uh, and to see her as a complex human being. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, she That's wasn't. That's nice. And, and she was. Um, you know, we kind of wonder what would happen if she hadn't died at 41. With right. Or what more books might have been in there. Yeah. Um, her early works, her juvenilia, is, yes. can be interesting. Um, Lady Susan is probably one of the best, because it was towards the end. Of her, her young stuff is just, you know. 
it's fun writings. But remember, you're talking the story about writing the little book when you were, mm-hmm. you know, in school. She she did that. She would write like her history of England, <laughs> Aww, which was hilarious. And her sister, yeah, and her sister <laughs> illustrated it, nice. and it still exists. I mean, there's copy, you know, and they have it, you know, Aww. printed, and it's very fun, you know. She so it's you know the things that that we do now have been done. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Forever, you know, for the most part. And so then when the Bonnie Museum opens up. <laughs> right. You know, your It'll early right works. Mm-hmm. Your early works. You know, your history of England yep. will be there. So. <laughs> so, but yeah, Lady Susan, it was the Love and Friendship movie. They made that one into uh, a Love and Friendship movie. Okay. With Kate Beckinsale. And, uh, and that was a lot of fun. But so, yeah, it was pretty snarky. That was a snarky <laughs> one. I read that one. And that I was, like it. That was more of a, of a the, is it a pistol? I can't ever say that right. The one where they basically letters. Go oh, back and forth. okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. There you so, go. And so she, you know, and you're, I'm reading this thing. Oh, I can like, I'm reading this going, oh, I so relate to Lady Susan. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> She's a snarky bitch. I like her. No, I like bring her a her lot. In. <laughs> yeah, I like her a lot. So I was like, wow, who'd she base this one on? You know? So. Oh, too fun. Her sister, probably. <laughs> no, her sister no. was actually, her older sister was very much kind of like, to a certain degree, probably like Jane Bennett in ah. right, you know pride oh okay just, gotcha you know very you know loving and caring and see you know, upright jane was the rebel yes <laughs> <laughs> our theme for january is rebels <laughs> <laughs> and i'm excited sweet thanks for sharing that was all really interesting i love it <laughs> and bringing us some beautiful bookmarks yes i got yes! bookmarks from trot and cotty trot house where they have the so pretty the, ink, the early um women writers uh library That's so and good. her um the big house this was a painting um that's from like 1790 i think oh, 1740 wow. i'm sorry oh dear um, God, yeah, yeah it's obviously it's changed a lot but <laughs> um when they her and her mom and her sister had nowhere else to live the brother who had this house because he was actually adopted by some family that could not have kids but had all the money oh gotcha so they like yeah. you know hoard out the child so they can you know he took their name and he got their money of course and uh, <laughs> one of the estates they had at Trotton cottage which is the, the was basically the game the ga- gamekeeper cottage mm-hmm. at Trotton house they made it for them to live in so oh, very cool and that's now jane they call that the jane austen's house nice which is on the grounds with the with the with the Trotton house and Trotton cottage cool. and um, that's where she shot and cottage is where she wrote and or at least finished wrote some of the books and some of them she had started and finished in her final finished up and yeah everything. and they actually have the the little desk that she sat at Aww. in the corner of the dining room and she would write and she would not let them um, fix the door so that if it squeaked when somebody was coming yeah she would hide the paper so that she wouldn't know anybody would know <laughs> i'm what not she writing was doing. i'm not doing anything yeah you know they wouldn't know so just she's keeping up on my correspondence <laughs> well even then she would just like hide it underneath there they didn't know what she was working on so because oh. you know again she was a gentlewoman she wasn't supposed to be writing right anything, so, it's not yeah. that rebellious things like writing yeah, so squeaky door oh somebody's coming exactly hide it hide i it like quick. it that's why old houses are brilliant that way <laughs> <laughs> Well, that wraps it up for this this week. Join us next week as our next gal pal share her one cool author at Giles. Giles, Guide. <laughs> Sorry, I've had too many salsers, people. <laughs> gal, Gals Guide podcast continues. Thanks for listening. And bottoms up. <laughs> For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gals Guide patron today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>